Thank you for being here this morning. This is an important day for children with autism in Ontario and their families. I was asked to take on the role as Minister McLeod's parliamentary assistant by the Premier because I know firsthand what it's like to try and support a child with autism. I am the mother to four children, including two with autism spectrum disorder. I know just how difficult days can be trying to raise a child with special needs, desperately trying to support them, struggling to get through the next minute, let alone hour or day, worrying about your child's future. Will they graduate from high school? Will they be able to find a job? Will they be happy? What about today? Will they be able to express their feelings? Have a friend to eat lunch with? Be able to tell me about their day? This is why our government is continuing to hear the lived experiences of families with children with autism. It has been seven years since we found out that my eldest son, Kenner, has autism. And still, when I think back to that day, I can't stop myself from crying. It is absolutely gut-wrenching. Months prior, he had gone for a secondary screening with a local doctor. Not once did that doctor mention autism in that appointment. Then out of the blue, we got a letter in the mail saying that Kenner had autism. No notes were enclosed. We didn't receive a single phone call. We were blindsided and had no idea where to turn next. Like many families do when faced with this diagnosis, we spent many sleepless nights worrying. How could we help him? He would scream for hours because he couldn't tell us he was hungry or thirsty or express his feelings. All we knew at this time was that he couldn't go anywhere without his favorite cracker box in his hand. Hundreds of hours of appointments followed. We spent tens of thousands of dollars out of our own pocket for autism behavioral services before and after he went through the previous government program. Through the hard work of many therapists, Kenner progressed from a child with roughly about a dozen words to a child that, while he still struggles to express his feelings and emotions, talks nonstop. Now, I wish I could say that our provincial system has made similar progress, but it hasn't. The Ontario Autism Program has turned into one huge wait list. Of the nearly 32,000 children registered, nearly three quarters are waitlisted, and the waitlist has barely moved since the program began. Some families have been waiting for more than two years. About a quarter of families receive the majority of the program's budget, while everyone else waits and waits. It just isn't fair. I recently had the opportunity to host roundtables across the province and hear directly from parents of children with autism. I met with families in Cambridge, Kitchener-Waterloo, Ottawa, Kingston, London, Newmarket, Niagara, Whitby, Windsor, and Oshawa. The stories they had to share were absolutely heartbreaking. Many parents have had to quit their jobs to support their child. They highlighted the amount of stress that their anxiety that is weighing on them day after day and their whole family. Some were so overcome with emotion that they could barely get through telling me their struggles that they face every day. But most of all, these families just don't understand 
why a small number of children get access to service, while the majority are sitting on wait lists without access to these vital services. Minister McLeod's history supporting children with autism goes back to her first days as an MPP in 2006. She has always been a fierce fighter for children to have the support and access to services that they need. She, along with our government, have been collecting feedback from dozens of families, service providers, and autism experts across the province, while also looking carefully at what other provinces and countries are doing. We took it all into account as we considered how to start to fix this system. Now I'd like to welcome the Minister to the podium and explain our plan to ensure that we are revamping the Ontario Autism Program so that children don't spend years on wait lists. Thank you, Amy, for sharing your very emotional story. I have to say, each time I hear it, I am really affected by it. I admire your dedication, undertaking the role of MPP as a young mother, working on a policy field that is so close to your personal experience. You understand firsthand the challenges that parents with autism face, but through Kenner, you understand the challenges that children with autism face. Thank you for traveling across this great province on my behalf to meet with the families and hear their heartfelt stories. Your passion, your advocacy, and your determination for families with autism is inspirational. Now, Thanks to Amy's consultations with families across the province, we know the anguish of long and seemingly endless wait times and have heard how the autism program is broken. We've heard how the autism program isn't working for families who need support for their children. We've heard how the wait for a diagnosis can throw a family into crisis. We've heard how the choice between one service provider of one kind of service is no choice at all. We've heard that families want better oversight over service providers. Consider the extent to the liberal mess that I inherited. There are 40,000 children in Ontario living with autism, but only 8,400 are receiving or transitioning into service, while 23,000 children wait. Keep in mind, 75% of the children with autism in the province of Ontario today are denied service by their government. That's unacceptable. Unfortunately, no one can tell these families how long that wait will be for their child or when they can expect desperately needed support or if their child will age out of the program before their number is called. What's most disappointing is we know that early intervention is when autism supports make the greatest difference. And yet, families have told us that under the Liberal program, they continue to wait with no hope in sight. This is especially disappointing, considering the Ontario government invests $321 million each year in autism supports, that under the current system, leaves three out of four children behind. And what's worse, and this is way worse, I've already had to get an emergency increase of $100 million to keep the program for just 25% of the children 
afloat through the holidays in the six months since being elected. I cannot, in good conscience, continue the Liberal plan that was more about politics than serving the people it was intended to support. The Liberal system was unfair, inequitable, and it's unsustainable. It abandoned children and families in the greatest need, and it actively balked thousands of families from affordable, early intervention for their children. That's why I'm here. We should do better, we can do better, we must do better, and we will do better. Because children with autism in the province of Ontario deserve better. Today, our government for the people is announcing a reform to Ontario's autism program. We are restoring fairness, equality, and sustainability to the system. And we are taking decisive action to help ensure the families of the 23,000 children who are languishing on the wait list finally get the support that they need. Through these reforms, we will clear the Ontario Autism Program waitlist within the next 18 months and provide families with the support that they need. As someone who was the co-founder of the South Nepean Autism Centre 13 years ago with my then NDP opponent, Laurel Gillespie, I know that autism is a growing issue. I also know that there's not one silver bullet to save every family from struggles. Throughout this time, I've met with families. I've heard their struggles. But most of all, I saw the potential and the possibilities in their children. That's why our program needs to be sensitive to the many different circumstances families face. At a recent consultation I hosted in Ottawa, a parent said to me, and I quote, if you've met one child with autism, you've only ever met one child with autism. Every child, every diagnosis is unique. Our plan recognizes that at different ages, children and youth require different supports. And also recognizing that any supports government provides must be targeted at lower and middle-income families with the greatest financial need. So, here's what we're going to do. We are going to clear the wait list for a diagnosis by doubling the investment in diagnostic hubs like right here at Holland Lorview. We're going to clear the wait list for support by going direct to families with the funding, up to $140,000 per child until they're 18, and we will empower parents and families to make the best choices for their children. We're going to provide families with real choices in the types of service they receive and where they receive it. Choice and flexibility for families that will include caregiver training, respite, and technology aids in addition to behavioral services. We recognize how difficult it is for families once they receive a diagnosis. And we want to simplify how they navigate through that process. That's why we will empower Autism Ontario to look at intake, wait lists, funding, and service navigation. We will continue to work with the Minister of Health on improving oversight and preventing unethical practices and the Ministry of Education to improve the continuum of supports, including the update of their website today on the autism services that are provided within our government's education system. Nobody should underestimate the challenges families living with autism face. Our challenge as a government is to continue to be there to support them, to clear the wait list, to treat people fairly, to make the system sustainable, to make the system more responsible, and to guarantee that supports will be there for families in need now and well into the future. It took a long time for the Liberals to create the mess we inherited. And it's taken a lot of work with some difficult decisions for us to fix it. 
but I'm proud of the work our government has done in the last six weeks, six months, and proud of the work of my parliamentary assistant, Amy Fee. Together, we're going to clear the wait list for diagnosis, we're going to clear the wait list for support, and we're going to empower families to make the best choices for their children. This is the new Ontario Autism Program. Happy to take any questions. Questions at the mic, please. One question, one follow-up. Hi, it's Chris hey. Rishoy from The Star. Hi, Chris Rishoy from The Star. Um, you set a childhood budget of up to $140,000. Um, there are some families that currently spend about $60,000 a year, and they're going to go through this budget in a couple of years. So how does this new program support these families? The, the, the program will be available right up until there's 18. There will be an allotment. There will be an ability for them to make some adjustments. So that's why we have uh, the um, Autism Ontario that will be their navigator to work through those family budgets. Um, we will, I will be very honest, like to front end a lot of this money uh, for children between the ages of zero and five because we know early intervention is key. That is evidence-based. Uh, but that said, today's announcement is about clearing the wait list. When you have a program that costs $321 million and 75% of the children who need the support are excluded, we have to bring in some fairness, some equity, and we have to make sure it's sustainable. So we're, we're really excited about this program. And with regards to clearing the wait list, we've heard concerns that there are not enough qualified professionals as is. So how do you clear a wait list when you don't have enough people to make these diagnoses? So uh, two ways. First of all, we're going to clear the, diagnos uh, the diagnostic uh, um, wait list by investing into uh, regional hubs, such as right here in Holland Bloorview or in my city in Ottawa. So that will, uh, that will help us with that investment. Uh, secondly, we're going to allow for more choice in the system. And when you look at, uh, for example, um, there's only one type of support. We need to get back to a, a situation where we allow for a, a caregiver training. We allow for respite support. We allow for technological age. So I think that's going to be a way that we can, we can definitely do that. Hi, Alison Jones with CP. Um, is there any, um, is the need for intensity built into this system? Uh, say if there's, you know, an eight-year-old who needs greater intensive therapy than um, a younger child who might get more funding over their lifetime, is that factored in at all to the amounts families will get? Uh, the, the amount that families will get will be based on, at the first, the zero to five to ensure that we are getting um, to evidence-based early intervention. Uh, then there will be a subsequent amount um, as, as children uh, get closer to the age of 18. Uh, that will be managed uh, along with the families uh, and, and their providers as well as uh, Autism Ontario. Uh, but I think the important thing here to note today is we have 75% of children with autism in the province of Ontario that are not getting service. And it's important that we build in that choice for their families, but also build in the investment in the diagnostic hub so that we can protect these children and give them a fighting chance at succeeding. We've lost a generation because of bad liberal policies that were more about politics than there were about, they were about people. Uh, today is more about making sure that every single child in the province of Ontario who has a diagnosis of autism it gets the support that they need. And you say the funding is going to be targeted to low and middle income families. Is there going to be an income cutoff at which families won't qualify for any supports or is it a, a sliding scale? Yes, there will be income testing. I'm happy to, uh, my, my staff will be happy to provide that to you. But so is there a point at which families won't get any support? Yes. Okay. Do, do you have that number off? It's $250,000. Thank you. Hi, Minister Cynthia Mulligan, City News. Why are you all telling me who you are when I know who you all oh, are? Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Just in case you forgot my name. Yeah. It's horrible. Yeah. You tweeted We're being at me formal. Today. We're behaving. Okay. <laughs> um, I have to say, I, I, I didn't envy you this job because I know what a mammoth task it is and, and how dire the situation has been for many families. However, it seems to me what you've accomplished is you're clearing the wait list, you're, you're giving more children access, but far less funds to be able to get the treatment that they need. How do you answer desperate parents who are saying this is not going to be nearly enough money? Well, for 23,000 families, or 75% of those that are on the wait list, this will be a lot more money. It'll provide support and hope, and that's what we intended to do. I'm working with the Minister of Education to ensure that we have proper supports in our education system so we can continue to integrate children. Um, but what I inherited, and I can't uh, emphasize this enough, a $321 million that was on the brink of bankruptcy when I was appointed in June, I had to go to Treasury Board twice, seeking over $100 million in the last five months. The program 
is unfair, it's inequitable, and it's unsustainable, and it leaves 75% of the children behind. I can, in good conscience, can continue with the Liberal program, and uh, this, is, this is, I think, going to be the best approach for everybody, particularly as we put more investment into the early years and ensure that uh, evidence-based early intervention is, uh, is key to our program. And can I also ask, uh, I don't see anything about regulations here, and a lot of agencies and parents have been calling for the profession to be regulated. Why are you not regulating the profession? We are regulating the profession. Uh, we are working with the Ministry of Health right now in order to bring those regulations forward. So uh, right now the Ministry of Health is uh, undergoing a review of uh, many of the colleges, but this is certainly one of our key components. It was a key component for me as uh, somebody who had been an autism advocate for many years, as a mental health advocate, and uh, you know I've worked a lot in the past with Holland Bloor View on concussions. And I recognize uh, you know, in, in, in all three of those areas, you can have uh, actors that aren't uh, necessarily in the best interest and, and would prefer to profit, which is why for me as minister, uh, it became very clear early on that, uh, that there needed to be a, a stronger service standards, which is why I referenced that in my speech. Um, good morning, Minister. Uh, there's, there's a school of thought out there that sometimes girls can get diagnosed uh, later than boys. I'm just wondering, um, by focusing resources on younger kids, one concern parents have is that this might end up leaving, um, you know, put it, leaving girls behind. How do you plan to account for that in this new, uh, in this new plan? Well, I think the investment that we're going to double into the regional hubs on diagnosis will certainly help uh, everyone, uh, regardless of gender, uh, and, and quite frankly, regardless of, of ethnicity, um, because I think that there are concerns as well there. But I think it's important that we, we invest into uh, facilities like Holland Bloorview and CHEO uh, across the province to make sure that we're clearing the diagnosis wait list so we can finally transition kids into direct funding so that their parents can start to uh, support them in the best way that they possibly can. Um, and the kids who are on the wait list right now, how soon can they expect to start receiving funding? Our intention is to clear the wait list within the next 18 months. Hi, good morning, Minister. I, I know that you say that you want a lot of the funding to be front-loaded. Um, I'm curious as to what the ministry thinks a, a child on the autism spectrum, uh, on the spectrum, how much intensive behavioral therapy does a child need in order for them to be functioning? Well, as I said in the speech when I spoke to a mother from Ottawa, if you meet one child with autism, you've only ever met one child with autism. Every single child, every single diagnosis is unique. And so it would be difficult to say that uh, because one child has a, a certain uh, set of requirements that every other child would be the same. So I think it's, it's impossible to, uh, uh, to, to answer that question. Um, but I think it's important that what we do and we, we continue to commit to is clearing the wait list so kids get a diagnosis quicker and we can get direct funding to them sooner so that they can get the supports that they desperately need. But many say that, you know, in order to get that one-on-one -on -one therapy, it costs about $80,000 a year if, you're, if your child is in for 38 to 40 hours a week. Uh, this would only cover those costs for two years and a bit. Um, what should parents or families do beyond that time once this money will run out for them? Uh, well, the, the children will have their budget right up until they're aged 18. Uh, so we are respecting the, uh, the fact that autism doesn't end at five. Uh, we do recognize that children and youth uh, at different points in their life require different supports. Um, but I think it's really important to note that in a $321 million program, 75% of the children are being left out. And this announcement today is more about fairness, equality, and sustainability so that we can help every child with autism in Ontario get ahead. Last question, please. Uh, Minister, you're talking about the, the system as a whole and making it more equitable, which I think people can understand, but if you're an individual parent who's looking at less money, what can you say to those parents who are just going to be angry, I think, knowing that they're going to get less funding? Oh, look, um, we have 23,000 children today in Ontario that are languishing on a wait list, that have no hope, their parents are frustrated, they're scared, they want their child to receive some support. I cannot, in good conscience, as the minister responsible for children and youth, allow the Liberal program to continue. 
It's unfair, it's inequitable, and it's unsustainable. This is the best approach, and it's the most fair approach to ensure that every single child in Ontario with autism is protected and has a fighting chance to succeed. To sure, to sit on a wait list, I know what that's like. To sit with both of my children, we sat for years, sitting on a wait list, waiting for support. It's absolutely terrifying to know, you know, what's going to happen in their future, what's going to happen next, and how do I get through this? To have that little bit of hope, to give these parents a fighting chance for their child, that's what this is about. We cannot leave three quarters of those children sitting on that wait list with nothing. in major cities like Toronto as opposed to in rural areas? Uh, so, uh, pleased that you asked that question, actually. Uh, we're very uh, pleased that uh, providers right now, like Erin Oak, uh, Holland Bloorview, and Shio, have all endorsed this plan, and we'll have more to say about that throughout the day um, in, the, in the wealth of uh, support that we've received across the province. In addition, uh, we are going to uh, increase our investments in northern Ontario uh, for rural and remote communities. So uh, that is a qu question and it's an important one and it's one that we're addressing. Okay. Thank you everyone. Thank you.